we're going to the arena to see if there's somewhere there that we can. Mixed in a little bit of Kevlar fibers and all, all sorts of other ingredients that they put in there. But basically, it's a delaying mechanism. So if they come under attack, it's not going to last forever. But they can get out of it without the bullets going inside the vehicle and, and hurting people. So that's basically the design of the half armored um, six-wheel drive Hinchower. Um, I so want one of these. I really do. But unfortunately, it's not a normal MOT. Not it's an RS six and a half ton, which puts it. Same MOT as a lorry, so you get to a long way to this. But you can see, um, again, somebody did it here earlier, up at the top you've got a big hole, and again, this is for wires. Imagine somebody standing out the back, and the, uh, the nasty people have put a thin wire across. If that hits you in the neck, it's not going to be nice. So that part's catching fire, and it's not going to be nice. So that's what happens out the back. So really, really nice vehicles. They've just started to be released out of the army now. So a lot of people are um, sort of picking them up and keeping them on the and keeping them rolling. So it's just something about, yeah, but really, really nice. And it's something you can drive um, on a semi-normal license. And older of us will have the seven and a half ton grandfather rights. So you can uh, quite happily um, drop on the road, take it shopping, to Tesco, there you go, you can have a look in the back. Right, so we're going to start seeing a little bit bigger on the track. So I'm going to start with the Abba here. Right, so this is Cold War. So this is called a, uh, a 433 Abba. Now this is not a tank because the definition of a tank is a missile that's been fired on the moon which is propelled by track. But this is a self gun, uh, it's got a 105 gun on. They will fit in a normal garage if you drive quick enough. You'll definitely get it in there. You might not get it, but you will definitely get it in there. Now the unique thing about, uh, not so much on the, uh, the petrol engines, the more on the Mark IIs on the diesels, is that the power pack taken out of the engine, put down in front, reconnected to the vehicle. It can actually run the engine outside of the vehicle. So it's good for maintenance, um, fault finding, all that sort of stuff. Um, and the record, which wasn't held by a box section, held by another six section, put a complete pack out in 45 minutes on the floor reconnected. I think they're lying, but uh, be done very really really quickly but very very nice it's really nice to see a petrol one there's not many about 
Um, so, yeah, there it is. And uh, it's reasonably local to here. Yeah, it's all uh, lives not too far away. Okay, so this is part of the late uh, John Newton collection. And uh, I've seen some of his collections, he's got some really, really nice bits of kit. Uh, but this is the one that I really, really like. So, uh, yeah, here you go. You watch, as soon as he puts his foot on that throw, that's 40 quid gone. <laughs> but they come in at about 15 tonnes. They had some nicknames, so they were called uh, Jack Wagon, Battle Bus, Armoured Taxi, and um, all sorts of stuff. But primarily it was called a 432 Armoured Person Carrier. Well, there you go. What else have we got? Let's get something else. Let's get some... Uh, ah, let's have the ferrets. Ooh, got dingo. So does anybody actually know what a group of ferrets is called? Like a flock of birds, I'm not quite sure. Is it a brace? No, that's pheasants, isn't it? Anyway, I don't know. So these are called ferrets. Uh, so basically these are scout cars, so these would be pushed. floating around the arena, doesn't it? Of course, it's going to start recording. It stopped going. So, uh, yeah, we're actually quite pleased to have it here. But it's, um, there we go. Cradle's open. Cradle folds away. Uh, 
and there you go. You don't really want to be on the receiving end of one of these. So basically what these boys would do, um, they were they were out in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, they were also out in Bosnia. Um, like I said, this one's still actually serving, uh, but it's uh, been held by the Australian Museum at the moment as a showpiece. But what an impressive bit of kit. Pick up the empty one, go off, pick up another load. If you just keep doing that, we'll resupply. So we'll have one dedicated lorry just for that self propelled gun. machine gun firing, so Browning 30 caliber machine gun. So basically the, uh, the guy that's sitting next to the driver has got his own little machine gun out the front. So the 50 cal on the other
keep history alive, really. Just to be honest, at the end of the day, whether it's a Sherman, an AS90, a, a, a Chieftain, it's still keeping that history going for years and years to come. Which is something I really take my house to people. They spend a lot of money and they get enjoyment out of it. Just sort of uh, having a whale of a time. But this, this Chieftain um, is the one that's been up on the, on the big ramps up there. Yeah. In a combat situation, I'd like to think he's a bit quicker than this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. You know, while all this is going on, the typhoon would have been in, dropped the bomb, killed the target, gone home, and now we're drinking tonics now. Felt that. We didn't do the five. Hit my head. Whoa, look at the ring. Oh, yeah. Smoke ring. Smoke ring. Well, that's not too bad, is it? Yeah, oh, brilliant. What do we think of that? He looks like his bow gun working. His machine gun. I like this audience. It's like, come on, Please crush the car. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Right. Time to crush. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, oh, oh, no. <laughs> Hold it there, hold it there. So the T-54 was obviously decided.